Hello YouTube and welcome back to What The Math. In today's video on Universe Sandbox 2, we're going to be taking a look at some really awesome new features, but specifically we're actually going to be talking about something that is currently going on in space. And what I'm talking about is of course the Perseids. If you don't know what that is, if it's currently August uh, 7th to August 20th, go outside and raise your head, look into the night sky for a few minutes and you'll see what I'm talking about. It is of course the meteor shower that is probably the most famous and the most uh, well thought of when it comes to meteor showers every year. So it's the one that's kind of very uh, good at timing itself. It's always, always on time and it's always around this time in August that you actually can see it really well from Earth. So essentially, what are, what is it? Well, it's, it's a bunch of really tiny rocks that I'm gonna try to simulate it here, that basically pass through Earth atmosphere really, really fast. I don't know if I can do it here, but let's try it. Let's try it. Uh, I'm gonna launch a little rock. All right, so let's try to simulate this. So imagine this is the tiny, tiny rocks passing through our atmosphere. And as they pass through the atmosphere, they actually, okay, they don't actually do that, but they uh, pass through atmosphere and they burn in, in the atmosphere and they create these streaks across the sky. And it's absolutely beautiful. If you've never seen it, you really should check it out. It kind of actually looks like this, like what you see in the back there. Um, you need to be kind of really, really, really good at seeing them because it happens so fast, it's like microseconds. And they're not really that big, they're about the uh, size of a pea or even less than that, like tiny, tiny sand-like objects. And the cool thing about them is that all of them are actually remains of this really, really big comet called Swift Tuttle. Now, let's see if we can find this in the simulation here. And there it is, Swift Tuttle. So it's uh, it's a comet that's actually oh something just collapsed into, into our beautiful planet. Uh, it's a comet that I'm gonna try to uh, create right here next to Earth just to show you what it looks like. So here we go. Now this one for some reason is actually very circular, and it I do believe this is a wrong uh, size for it. So it's actually a lot bigger than it is in this game. Uh, the actual size of this comet is approximately 32 kilometers in diameter. And uh, here, I think it's only 13 kilometers, yeah. So this is a little bit smaller than it should be, but we're going to actually simulate this a little bit more accurately. It's also, it's not very spherical. It's not actually as spherical as this. But we're gonna simulate this. And what we're going to do today is simulate an, a what-if scenario. So what if this comet, which is actually described by all of the astronomers in the world as probably the most dangerous object, uh, in in the in space that can actually one day hit Earth and basically kill everyone. Um, so what if this comet actually does smack into our planet? Because if you think about it, the reason why we have all of these uh, meteor showers every August is because one of those days, back in the days, this comet passed by the same area where Earth is now, and. It was, I guess, in, in August, sometime in August, many, many years ago, it passed by and left all of these rem, uh, remaining, basically leftovers, little rocks that are now flying in space that we pass through every, every August. Now, what, what does it mean? Well, it means that maybe one day it will actually return in the same path because it is a comet that has a, um, an orbital period of 133 years. So maybe one of those years, sometime in the future, it will come back and smack right in the middle of our planet. So let's actually try to simulate this for fun and see what happens. Specifically, we're actually going to be using one of the new features. Um, we're going to be looking at the climate changes and we're going to be using this graph here that is actually kind of cool. So if you actually look at the graph, and I guess this is actually where the math comes in. So if you look at the graph of temperature or average temperature, it sort of is quite stable. It goes up and down a little bit. So I'm going to actually change this to 100 years just so it, you can see it a little bit better. So it actually goes up and down a lot, but every year it's sort of in the same region. So essentially this is the climate change. So what we're going to be observing today is what happens if you smack a really large object into our planet how will this affect temperature? What will happen? Will we all die or will we, will we be okay? Now, before I, I start all this, though, oh, this is making me dizzy. I'm gonna actually decelerate this a little bit. Um, before we start all this, so this is actually already simulating the climate on our planet. So you, you'll see that right now in the winter, this is December, you see some snow here, snow caps. And then if I actually advance this to summertime, let's go to the summer. Uh, oh, too fast, way too fast. Go back. All right, so here we go. So this is June 6th, 
and you can see there is almost no snow in North America now. So we're actually going to take a look at this as well. So how will um, climate change if a large object uh, such as the comet uh, Swift Tuttle smacks into our planet and basically does a little bit of damage or a lot of damage. Now the thing is, uh, things like that did happen to our planet before. So approximately two billion years ago, maybe a little bit less than that, there has been a very very large asteroid that actually did hit. Uh, let me find where is this place? Where is Africa? That's not Africa. That's Australia. In Africa, right? Uh, so this is Africa, right here in South Africa. If you were to ever go to South Africa, there's a place called uh, Vredefort. I don't exactly know where, but I think it's somewhere over here in this region. And Vredefort is actually a very large, large, large crater. It's approximately um, it's over. Uh, I think it's over 300 kilometers in size. And uh, so it's about maybe this big. And this crater was actually formed by a very large asteroid that did hit our planet. But that was obviously before, you know, all of the animal life appeared on our planet. This was still when things were very, very small. There was only um, unicellular organisms, meaning that they only had one cell. So it was very simple life back then. So, so there wasn't actually any extinction because the life was too simple and it would probably recover really quick. There's actually another really big crater in North America. It's actually in the province of Ontario in Canada. And I believe, uh, where would that be? It would be somewhere over here, maybe. And it's called Sudbury Crater and or Sudbury Basin that is because it's actually it's more of a basin not a crater and it's also formed by a very large rock even bigger than the one in Africa probably about 15 kilometers in size and this was about 1.8 billion years ago and it actually did a lot of damage and you can see that damage if you ever travel through Ontario you can actually stand on the side of the crater and see how big it is it's huge it's humongous it's about 200 kilometers in size uh, it's absolutely massive, but because it's been, you know, such a long time, it's kind of uh, all overgrown with trees and stuff. So you won't really, uh, you won't feel like this is an actual crater unless someone tells you. And so, yeah, those craters were created by rocks, but actually rocks that were about half the size of Comet Swift Tuttle. So the Comet Swift Tuttle is 32 kilometers in size, but the most dangerous part about it is that it's actually it moves across the night sky, or basically in comparison to Earth, at, at a speed of approximately 60 kilometers per second. So if it does hit our planet, that sounds like a lot of trouble. So uh, what we're going to do, oh, I don't know what happened there with the graph there, but what we're going to do is we're going to launch um, basically a comet or an asteroid in this case. I think that we can only launch an asteroid. So this is a new button that they added, uh, add body and launch so we're gonna launch a minor object and we can choose swift auto but it's actually not what i want because it's not exactly the right dimensions or shape so we may have to just use a randomly generated rock let's just do a random asteroid we're gonna pause this for a second and let's just uh let's see let's hit north america for fun because why not uh so we're gonna hit north america it's gonna go straight for it Perfect. I just have to change its dimensions a little bit before we continue. Oh, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, there's actually music in the game now, and I'm really happy about it because I don't have to include my own music anymore. I used to add uh, music from uh, Incompetech.com, which is an amazing website with a lot of open source music, or royalty-free music, that is. Uh, but now I don't have to because now there's an amazing music in this game, and I'm super happy about it. Uh, in the next video, I'm actually going to focus on all of the changes that this game has gone through and introduce some of the new features, uh, such as, for example, Magnetosphere, which is super awesome. But, okay, so this is called Rihanna, so let's rename it. It's going to be called Swift Tuttle. This is the name of the comet, and it's going to be heading straight for North America, maybe in the year 5000. Or something, uh, because actually, this uh, scientists, they uh, astrophysicists, they've actually calculated that, or not astrophysicists, but astronomers, uh, that it's not going to hit us in the next four thousand years. Uh, until about four thousand five hundred, we're pretty safe, but after that, we don't really know. So here we go. Here it comes. Now the speed is only thirty kilometers per second. I'm actually going to accelerate it right before it hits uh, the ground because if I accelerate it right now. 
it's it will unfortunately fly out of this uh, orbit and probably not hit Earth at all. But currently we are heading straight for Earth. Let's zoom in, maybe. Let's stand on on the tip of this beautiful destructive object. Oh no, there's all these bugs now. What is going on? This is actually um, this is the kind of started happening very recently with the new Alpha. Mostly because you'll see why because they've actually changed the way planets behave now and I mean other objects as well. So whenever something hits a planet in this game, it will now create um, like an actual crater that will be sort of a, a deformity in the planet. So because of this, there's a bit of visual glitches, but it's okay. It's worth the trouble. You'll see why. Uh, so, all right. So here we go. This is North America. I don't really know what state we're going to be hitting, but it's somewhere in central US. So if, you, if this is your state, I'm really sorry. It was not intended, but you're about to die. All right, so here we go. The music is not particularly dramatic, but this is a very dramatic experience. So right before it hits the ground, I'm going to uh, increase this right here to about 60 kilometers per second, and we'll see what happens. I'm actually kind of curious to see what this looks like from the planet, but I don't think I have enough time to see this. All right, here we go. Here we go. And... Perfect. 60. So it's going to be hitting it under an angle and beautiful. Look at that. Look at this explosion. Holy cow. All right, so... Yep. The entire North America has been covered by an explosion. Meaning that chances are that almost nobody would survive on this particular continent. And there's actually a piece that has just separated and uh, bounced off the planet, but it will probably fall back down. Uh, and you can see the shock wave as well, as well. This is actually pretty beautiful. So I'm going to switch to climate and actually start measuring temperature as well. And we're going to see how the climate changes. Currently the temperature is 14.3 degrees on average at least. Let's switch to Earth. And so let's see what happens here. So it, it actually hit uh, this part. And you know, there's, there's a bit of a glitch here, but as we accelerate time, it's actually going to hopefully disappear. Let's accelerate time a little bit more. And let's actually start looking at temperature, because the temperature will very likely to change. It's very likely to actually have some kind of an effect on our planet. And you can see there's actually a little crater that has formed um, a water basin in, in here, just like in, in Canada as well. And I think it actually hit the mountains, so the crater is not as big as I thought it would be. I expected a much bigger crater, uh, but this is big enough. And so, look at that, the temperature kind of jumped up a little bit, but we don't really know what's going to happen. I'm going to accelerate this to approximately maybe a few days per second, just to see how this affects our planet. And every once in a while, we're actually going to stop and see if anything changed. And if it did change, how did it change? So let's actually maybe after a few days on July 1st, stop this and look at it again. So, all right, so here we go. So this is what we have. There's two little craters that were formed by this explosion. Um, chances are that everyone on this continent is a little bit on the dead side. And everyone else might have survived. I mean, there will be a lot of aftershocks, there will be a lot of explosions, and possibly uh, the actual shockwave would be loud enough to deafen a lot of people around the world, because it would be really, really, really loud. And also, obviously, earthquakes, and possibly even tsunamis. But I don't think it would kill everyone. I mean, it would kill a lot of people, but a lot of people would still survive. Especially if you live in somewhere in, in like China or um, Africa. But the thing is, chances are the climate would change, and because of the climate change, we may actually be affected by it in some way. Specifically, there might be, or might be not, another ice age, and this is actually what I'm hoping will happen. I've done this simulation a few times with different types of uh, comets and asteroids, and once in a while, depending on uh, where I hit the asteroid, or depending on what happens, you may actually end up with an ice age. It happened to me at least twice where the planet turned into an ice ball. Uh, and so it's kind of a random thing, actually. It's, it, it may occur, it may not. But if you know why it occurs, or if you can figure out why it occurs, 
let me know in the comments below because I have not figured out why sometimes Ice Age occurs and sometimes it doesn't. But as you can see now, even though the temperature was at approximately 15 degrees, now it's at approximately 14.3. It is actually kind of stabilizing. So this is what uh, August thirteenth, twenty nineteen, and oh no, no! Look at that temperature is going down. So let's actually we're gonna run this for a few few years, I guess, and see where it takes us. All right, so it is now December. No, sorry, January third, twenty twenty. Uh, it's about a year after the impact and you can see the temperature actually did plummet a little bit. It actually decreased by approximately uh, one and a half degrees um, Celsius, meaning that the world is a lot cooler now and there's a lot more snow, the, the, the actual crater is covered in snow. And let's see if there's any snow anywhere else. So yeah, Europe is covered in snow as well because it's a little bit cooler and most of Asia, obviously Russia. And yeah, all of these places are still okay, but there's definitely a lot more snow than before. There's even snow here in the in the Middle East, and I think I believe this is Iran, or possibly no, this is Turkey, and what would that be? That's Iraq, I think. So there's snow um, in places that usually did not have snow, but we don't really have an ice age yet. So this is a lot cooler, and obviously will have uh, an effect on things like. Um, crops and harvests so there's obviously going to be less food here for people and possibly famine worldwide famine but you know what people will probably survive there's still going to be enough uh survivors going around to not make this an extinction event so let's keep going and see what happens after another year i'm going to accelerate this again and we're going to wait until the year 2021 and it's year 2021 now, a year later, and you can see it's already started to return back to normal temperature. So after about a year, the average temperature has increased by about half degrees. So it was only one year that we had this horrible disaster, horrible famine, not enough food, uh, lots of snow everywhere. Because after just one year, the temperature has already, the average temperature has already increased. Even though there's still some snow where it shouldn't be, like for example, right here in Iraq. Uh, it's already a little bit warmer so as i keep running this and you'll see if i just accelerate time i'm gonna move away a little bit and accelerate time to let's just say we're gonna go for months per second uh the temperature will start stabilizing which is really interesting so what does it say about our planet well for one is that it's very resilient you can see it's already kind of returning to the average temperature that we used to have um, so even despite this huge explosion and huge crater and you know changes in atmosphere for uh, at least a year, eventually our planet will actually recover and life will continue, life will go on, maybe new species will develop and uh, if it's not humans, it might be someone else, but life will not perish, it will still exist, it will still continue living. Now I, I'm just kind of curious to see if it's going to keep growing, because maybe, maybe it will. Uh, but chances are it's going to stop at around 15-ish degrees Celsius average, because that's where we started. Uh, the average temperature before was 15 degrees. Uh, but you can see there's a slight progression. It's actually, it went up from 14.4 to now around 14.9. So, uh, what is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, of course, it's a good thing. So, even if something happens to our planet, uh, it will still be okay after a few years. And essentially this is kind of what I was looking for here. I wanted to see if our planet can recover from this disaster and it totally can. Now, what can you take away from this? Well, next time you go outside and look at Perseids or basically just look up into the sky and see a meteor shower or some kind of a cool event where there's a comet, which will actually, uh, I, th I believe it's returning sometime in 2026. And so maybe your grandkids or possibly your grand grandkids will be actually to, uh, be able to see it with their naked eye. Um, so, you know, it's something to tell them, something to teach them is that one day this might actually cause a huge disaster on our planet, but don't worry, things will return to normal. Now, I'm not sure why it's going so high again. It shouldn't it should actually stop? Oh, no, it's still at. OK, yeah, 15.2. So let's see if it stops here or if it actually keeps growing, because in that case, maybe there's something went wrong, maybe the planet will actually start overheating. And if it overheats, that's global warming right there. That's possibly, uh, we might possibly turn into Venus, which is not what we want. 
So just for fun, I'm gonna keep running this, but that's pretty much it for this video. So Perseid shower, go take a look at it. Uh, look into the sky, usually at least every five minutes you'll see at least one of the uh, tiny, tiny meteorites uh, passing through the atmosphere and they'll leave a little streak in the sky. But if you have a cool camera that, that can do stop motion photography and also shoot it night, in night mode, you may want to just set it up, look into the sky and have it run for a few hours just to have an amazing, amazing picture of hundreds and hundreds of little meteorites passing through the sky, which once again are leftovers from the beautiful comet called Swift Tuttle. Anyway, this has been What the Math with a simulation of a potential impact of a huge comet into our planet. And oh right, so yeah, it's sort of flattening out, but not really flattening out fast enough. So uh, getting back to the original temperature will definitely take us at least possibly 20 years. So you can see it's sort of flattening out here and we're going to find out how long it takes for us to get to this more stable temperature. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, check out some of the other Universe Sandbox 2 videos. And there's definitely going to be more coming soon now that, now that I'm back and have a new computer and also resolve some of my issues that I used to have. Thank you for watching and game you later, guys. Bye bye. And I think the answer is 25 years. It will take about 25 years for us to restore the original temperature, although I think it might even be a little bit warmer than 15 degrees that we originally had. But that could also be possibly because of the global warming from other simulation that this game has and that's uh, related to CO2. So there you go, after about 25 years, it the temperature will be restored. Alright, so that's it, bye bye.